Hello and welcome back to the channel folks, this is your boy Stoic Warrior and for today's video is another video from Apex Legends. And for today's video we're gonna be talking about Revenant. Yes ladies and gentlemen, the Synthetic Nightmare, the Grim Reaper from the Apex Legends. So let's get on with the show folks. <laughs> What the hell are you? Death. With the topic at hand today, we're gonna we're talking about Revenant. Now, Revenant, what is he? Basically, he's considered as the Grim Reaper amongst the legends, and he has actually pretty much solidified that persona uh, his nickname as you can even on the legend selection you can see he's nicknamed as the synthetic nightmare and pretty much fills in that role pretty good and what I'm gonna talk about today is that he's too he's too underrated I mean I've not seen a I've not seen a lot of players that actually uh, do play as him I mean there are re really good players out there who actually main him really impressive players out there but not a lot of people he doesn't get that much attention as much as many of the other legends uh, out there get and I, I believe um, that's because people don't generally actually understand how to actually uh, use him correctly his passive ability includes that he can uh, he can crouch walk faster now basically without when you're running without sprinting actually uh, uh, his crouch speed is equivalent to the same speed as normal running without the sprint. And uh, when when you actually look at it from that point of perspective, uh, it, it's actually pretty pretty damn fast. Uh, for example, uh, when you crouch, you're actually reducing your own hitbox, whilst also uh, not making any sounds, for example, uh, any footsteps sounds. So basically, he's a pretty good sneak up character. People, uh, general, if you want to sneak up behind someone, you just uh, crouch with them and start walking in the direction from wherever you're flying anyone or some someone, etc. So basically, they wouldn't even know that you're coming out there unless, until, for example, there's a bloodhound out there nowhere near. Goes like all father keep excited. Oh, well, that's another story. But anyways, uh, people cannot uh, tend to hear. You. And you all, when, even in engagement, for example, when you're fighting up close and personal to someone, you straight up crouch and you start side strafing whilst you're crouching. And now the advantage of that is that you basically reduce your own hitbox. Uh, smaller the hitbox the less uh, the more accurately the enemy has to aim and if they have a moderate aim they they'll tend to miss a lot of shots and when you're uh, when you combine that with the uh, sitting and standing and you just uh, start crouching spamming like that you're you're bound to make your enemies miss a lot more shots on you so and and strafing was crouching he, he strays pretty damn fast while he's straight crouching. So that gives an added bonus. Uh, but alright, and, and his other passive is that he can actually climb higher. Now climbing higher, for example, he can approximately climb two floors of a building. So normally a legend can only climb up to one floor, whilst he can climb twice the heist so that also gives you a lot more options to climb now combine that you, you go around the building for example they're on a building the, the enemy squad is in a building and they're on the second floor uh, your allies your teammates can actually distract them whilst you crouch behind them Crou uh, crouch behind them and then climb from the back side and you can actually have a pretty decent chance of flanking them so that's another point um, that's another way to actually use his passive or in order to also get out of sticky situations he can climb higher and since he can climb higher he can uh, get out of reach of many of the other legends as well apart from Pathfinder Horizon of course. Now coming on to his uh, tactical ability Silence. Now basically Silence grenades they're pretty advantageous to use and uh, what they basically do is that they, they basically 
uh, knock out a legend's uh, use of his abilities for the next 20 seconds. You uh, and it's a pretty good way to actually area denial uh, tactics as well. For example, many people are actually hesitant to go through Revenant Silent uh, grenades. Uh, basically, why is that? Because uh, once that angle grenade uh, touches you, what it basically does is it takes away a legend's ability to use his abilities. Now, for example, if it's a wraith, you're fighting against a wraith, you use your silence grenade on her, she cannot phase out of there. She, she, does, uh, she will not be able to get out of uh, the fight with you. She will be forced to actually fight with you, fight against you, head to head, or. Uh, if she has to get out then she just has to use her plane movements that every other legend has but she will not be able to use her phase ability or her portal or in fact or you can actually uh, prevent Pathfinder from using his uh, from using his grapple or caustic from deploying gas traps lifeline if you can silence lifeline she will not be able to put a uh, dock uh, dock res onto her teammates that is provided if you uh, um, silence her before she before she uses dark res but uh, I do remember that uh, back in the, when dark res first came in season 5 uh, even whilst uh, dark was resing, uh, was resing an enemy you could actually throw your silence either on the enemy on which uh, dark was resing uh, it was certainly cancel it out but somehow respawn changed that I do remember that used to happen but some, sometime uh, a little while later we spawn changed that and we are not able to actually do that anymore but if you can actually silence lifeline before she uses dark res you can actually prevent her from using dark res for the next 20 seconds at least and uh, now now hold your horse because of this certain tactical he is one of the legends that an actually that can actually take on Gibraltar head on uh, head on in a 1v1 why is that now hear me out now if before you actually uh, go guns blazing against Gibraltar his gun shield his arm shield basically it has about 25 points of uh, hit points that's a lot of hit points considering he also has the fortified effect that is 15% damage reduction he takes 15% less damage um, add add to that 15% damage reduction another 75 points of the hit point pool due to that arm shield that thing's basically a tank he's a tank there's no denying about that but with your silence grenade if you can silence Gibraltar he will not be able to use his gun shield I'm not just talking about the dome and the uh, artillery bombardment that he does no I'm talking about the arm shield. He will not be able to use his arm shield for the next 20 seconds. For the next 20 seconds, Caustic is basically... Uh, sorry, not Caustic. Uh, Gibraltar is basically Caustic at that time. Without the abilities to actually... Without any abilities, he's just like Caustic without any gun shield, but a little larger hitbox than Caustic. So basically, without that gun shield, he has lost... He is 20, he's 75 points of hit points. He's lost 75 hit points just by that little silence grenade that does 10 points of damage. Gibraltar loses 75 points of damage, uh, 75 points of health straight away. Now that leaves him vulnerable, and without that gun shield, he's actually a pretty big football type target. He's a pretty big football target, but you get the point. He's actually a lot more easier to deal with once you actually knock out his uh, gun shield but you don't have to use any of your own ammunition whilst endangering yourself because you can just peek out throw your silence grenade at him there you go boom his arm shields out there you go now you just have to take and take on him but well then again if that caustic uh, sorry not caustic if uh, that Gibraltar is a heck of a shot then uh, I'm sorry anyway <laughs> But then again, he is one of those legends that can actually take on Gibraltar in a 1v1 head-on scenario. Head-on 1v1. If you can actually knock out his arm shield before he manages to mow you down. You silence him up, he will not be able to throw his dome even that way. So, another added effect. 
So that you see the silence grenade has a lot of its uses and it can also be used in situations where you need to retreat. For example, you're retreating but uh, and you're entering a building and you just throw your silence grenade at the door before you enter or after you enter. That actually uh, has a bit of a psychological effect on the enemies as well. For example, many of the enemies actually don't like to, many of the people don't like to actually mm, take the brunt of the damage of the silence grenade because they're afraid they won't be able to use their abilities. Yes, provide, uh, if you are going up against very good players that uh, uh, that are actually very nimble and uh, have very good aim, very good aim and very good movement tactics, well, they will still tend to push you, but most case scenarios people don't actually tend to go through your silence grenade because uh, they don't want to get uh, they don't want to lose their abilities for the next 20 seconds because if you never know when you actually need to use those abilities so it's an added effect uh, it's uh, it's a good way to actually treat as well and uh, it can be used both offensively and defensively as I've said. so pretty good advantage over there with the silence abilities now moving on to Revenant's ultimate ability, the Death Totem. Now the Death Totem is a very underrated ability and I've not seen many people actually use it to a certain... It, it can... Take her and go! advantages provided you actually uh, put it on a safe spot and enemies uh, don't tend to use it or destroy it before you can happen yes you can get a little bit clumsy with it but there are places where you can actually use that push uh, that added effect to your push and now what the death totem basically does is that you know, once you activate the death totem and you take the death protection it basically disables your shields for that point of time but you only have your health um, your uh, flesh damage at the at that point now with that flesh damage being said you have the hundred hit points of hundred hit points now you basically push for this hundred hit points and the moment you touch zero uh, you'll reset back at the death totem and your shields will now be back active it will now be back activated and it will restore 50 points of your flesh damage now considering this that actually gives you an added 50 points of health considering you just lost a hundred but you had you lost hundred but you regained 50 it doesn't give you full health back but it gives you an added health back but provided with that push, it can actually put the enemy into a bit of a, uh, well, yes, you're actually easier to take out and reset at that point because you have a lower health pool, but it gives you, but it is a safe way to push without actually being killed. So that is a pretty advantageous ability. If, uh, if used correctly, you can actually even take out squads. It can be both used once again. It can be both used as an offensive strategy and a defensive strategy. For example, if you know an enemy is about to push you, and you don't want to take the full brunt of the uh, take full brunt, you just straight up deploy the death totem. And before they, you know they're pushing you, but before they can actually get to you, you use the death totem. You take the death protection and you take the fight to them in uh, as a defensive strategy. That also helps you out a lot and uh, what, where people t tend to get clumsy with it is either they deploy it too far back or too close to the enemy. If it's too close to the enemy, the enemy can easily destroy your death protection whilst you're being, 
angles you're actually being a bit clumsy but with the death rotom try not to deploy it too far back so as to you would uh, either run out of time before you can actually effectively use the death protection push or try not to deploy it too close so as the enemy can either destroy it or take your death protection for themselves as well that can be a bit of a jam I believe you guys understand what I mean over there it can be a bit of a jam over there so death protection it has its pros it has its cons but if used carefully and strategically it can prove it can prove to be a very big advantage and if you can pair up those uh, your death protection with a certain other legend abilities for example if you have a wraith and a crypto alongside you <coughs> sorry if you have a wraith and a crypto alongside you uh, you deploy a uh, wraith uses a portal to connect two points, one one uh, her exit point to be close to the enemy and her entrance point a little far back, as far back as possible. Deploy the death totem close to the uh, portal, the one uh, the end that is uh, that is at your side. Deploy the death totem over there. Use death uh, use the death protection. Go through the portal. Start pushing them. Once you actually have been reset. And even if the death uh, death push act, uh, the death protection push uh, fails, you've not been able to do a lot of damage, and the enemy knows that, and they want to actually push you, and they're now going to push you because they know your death protection has expired, and you were at 50 flesh points, even including the uh, even if you include the shield. But sometimes, uh, if your uh, if the uh, push has failed. They can, they can try to push you, but they will of course try to push you through the portal. Now if you have a few termites over there, they don't know what's coming back. Or if you have a caustic alongside, you can actually deploy gas traps on your entrance of the portal. And they're in for a big surprise. And uh, once again, as I was saying, with crypto. Now what you do with crypto is, you use crypto's ultimate, the EMP. You take, uh, you take out half of the enemy shields uh, straight up and uh, stun them and then you push alongside with the death protection it's a pretty easy guarantee that you can actually easily take out the entire squad over there or actually make a very successful third party push as well alongside for example if you, uh, there are two squads fighting you use crypto's emp on both squads both you know both the squads either have zero shields at that point or at least half shields at that point you use the death protection push uh, very high chance that uh, you have very high chances of actually taking out both of the squads right over there. That will be all for today's video folks. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy the video please do leave a like and comment down in the section below. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly content. And if you want to check out more content from me either regarding Apex Legends, Halo, Titanfall, etc. Uh, make sure to check out my Instagram. I'll leave the link down in the description below. And once again, peace out.